Phylum Nidaria is also known as Cylenterata. It includes the hydra, the sea corals, the jellyfishes, and the sea anemones. Some of the characteristics of the Nidarians can be understood by looking at the structure of a hydra. Hydra is most of the times found in ponds and lakes of fresh water. And uh, if you see the structure, you can see the presence of food. This food is attached to the substratum and because it is attached to the substratum, it is a plant-like organism and it is not capable of movement. But at times, this hydra is capable of movement as well. With the help of its tentacles, it is capable of somersaulting. And uh, the presence of stinging cells or the tentacles, they show that... Um, this is a defense mechanism which is present in case of the hydra or the nidarians in order to fight against any predator or even in order to catch the prey. Presence of epidermis and mesoglia makes it evident that the organisms are diploblastic as mesoderm is not well developed. The gastrodermis you can see that a hollow layer is present and this kind of structure shows that the incomplete uh, digestive system must be there in case of the hydra. So let us look into some of the details of the structure of the nidarians. First feature is about the symmetry. If you see the structure of hydra, it has oral which is mouth surface and a bottle which is the base portion. So these kind of organisms, they can only be divided by radial symmetry. But it also contains this entire kingdom nidaria. It also contains the presence of uh, some organisms which are biradially symmetrical. So generally it is radial symmetry but at times it can be biradial as well. And uh, next is about the germ layers. In case of nidarians we have already seen that they have presence of epidermis and inside mesoglia. So definitely the, it is a diploblastic organism with presence of ectoderm and endoderm and uh, inside is presence of mesogly. The level of organization seen in nidarians is tissue level of organization because of presence of tentacles. So there will be aggregation of cells in order to form stinging cells which are helpful for catching the prey. In case of the nidarians we do not see presence of head and for the body movement, there are presence of only these tentacles which either serve the fun function of stinging the prey or help in the locomotion of the jellyfishes. The body wall in case of nidarians has presence of outer epidermis and inner gastrodermis. The gastrodermis is as such that it has aggregation of stinging cells which are nadoblast cells and the reserve Interstitial cells are there which are capable of uh, exchanging the worn out cells with the help of musculature or inner epithelial musculature. Now this mesogly is helping in replacing the worn out cells. If we think about only the stinging cells, they serve two functions. One is uh, they are, have presence of toxin within it and when this toxin is injected in the prey it paralyzes the prey that's why it's hypnotoxin and at times even the thread like um, tube which is the stinging cells they entangle the prey within itself and as the prey is entangled the prey is killed by stinging with the help of the same entanglement and um, in case of the nidarians, we do not see the presence of any body cavity or body psyllom, but the outer skeleton is present in case of the coral. So corals, they secrete calcareous outer skeleton and when they are dead, this uh, calcareous exoskeleton, they form the coral reefs. So the bed of the sea, the seabed is filled with coral reefs and it is very attractive and um, especially the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and even the Great Reef in the Australia are very famous sites for the tourists. The digestive tract in case of uh, 
nidarians is not well developed and that's why there is presence of hydroskeleton within it water is filled in the gastrovascular cavity and because of that the shape of the organism is maintained for the process of respiration excretion only the gastrovascular cavity plays all the important functions and um, for the case of reproduction again there is a very important or uh, special thing about these nidarians for the nidarians we see the presence of alternation of generation in them it means there are two life forms present one is so just remember the larva is known as planula and let's see the structure the two life forms are there one is polyp which is um, sessile and not capable of movement whereas another form is medusa which is capable of movement other than that uh, there is always alternation from one form to another at first we have to remember that sexes can be separate or they may be united in case of the nidarians reproduction is sometimes or uh, yes sometimes asexual like in but like budding in case of polyp form whereas in case of medusa form every time the gametes are released or zooids are released which um, are known as gonads and they fertilize to form the zygote and the fertilization in case of nidarians is always external the larva is the planula which we have already discussed and if we think about the alternation of generation how is it taking place in these organisms polyp and medusa are the two forms which alternate with one another the polyp is cylindrical which you can see in sixth point asexual reproduction sixth mature polyp it is cylindrical and usually fixed with the substratum it can be whereas medusa you can see the third one it is jellyfish form which is umbrella like and is capable of free movement in the ocean now either or both of the forms may occur in a species or maybe they can be subtypes present so that's why it is known as polymorphism in case of uh, the animals who transform themselves from polyp to medusa forms and the entire life cycle is as such that if we start from the mature polyp the mature polyp it develops the medusa over its fruiting body after the budding there is uh, formation of medusa and medusa is expelled out from the bud as soon as the feeding polyp is expelled out it forms the medusa which is free living and one when it matures it produces the gonads the gonads which are produced are produced as a result of meiosis and the sperm and the egg they fuse in order to form the zygote once zygote is formed it develops and forms the larva stage which is planula planula keeps on feeding and once when the feeding is done and it is completely capable of giving rise to the polyp form it goes and attaches to the substratum and develops into the polyp once the developing polyp is there then after a couple of days we see that the mature polyp is formed which has the again the reproductive polyp form or the feeding polyp form which forms the medusa so this is how the alternation of generation takes place in case of the hydrozoans or hydra in simple terms the hydra form is the polyp form medusa form is the adamsia form we call it as adamsia now uh, the small portion which is from medusa the release of gametes is taking place so sexual reproduction is for a very small period of time whereas the diploid form it is persistent throughout the life cycle haploid form is for only seen in the gametes we should learn some examples and the examples are hydra adamsia which is which looks like jellyfish gorgonia 
physalia pinnatula aurelia meandrina so these are some of the examples and um, if we want to concise about the nidarians we can think always about the tissue level of organization the presence of these specialized stinging cells the nidoblast cells because of which they are also known as um, nidarians again cilentrate they are called as cilentrates because of the gastrovascular cavity which is present in them the presence of incomplete digestive system is there in case of the nidarians we see that the body symmetry in case of nidarians is radial there is a germ layer like diploblastic germ layer is present in case of the nidarians so these are some of the forms and most important part is about the alternation of generation so polyp and medusa are always alternating with each other so by this we can um, conclude about or this is uh, the summary of the characteristics of sac like nidarians